In this video, we're gonna take a look at what it actually costs to charge an EV here in the UK. We're gonna take a look at both home charging costs and also public network charging costs as well. So in front of me, I'm just gonna play a little video. This is my Polestar 2. I've been driving this for about 18 months. It's my first EV, it's been great, I've really enjoyed it. And I think I'll stick with EVs going forward. I and mean, as we go through this video, there are a couple of things I just wanna point out to you guys so that when we go through the figures later on in the video, it should make a bit more sense. And when you come to get your own EV, hopefully it makes things easier to understand. So this is my wall charger. You see at the moment and the home charger, I'm charging at just under 7.2 kilowatts, which is the standard rate for a home wall charger here in the UK. The other stat that you'll need to know, and this may not be a sticker on the side of the car, you need to know the size of the actual battery. So the battery in the Polestar 2 is 78 kilowatt hours and the power output is 300 kilowatts but that's irrelevant for this video at the moment you just need to know the battery size which is 78 kilowatt so now we've got that basic information what we can do is go to this really advanced spreadsheet that i've put together and we can run through some options so you guys can get a feel for what it would cost you if you did go the ev route so to start with we've got two options here the charge at home with either a three pin plug or a wall charger. So the difference is the three pin plug, you won't have to pay maybe 500 to a thousand pound to have a wall charger installed. You can just plug it into any socket and providing your electrics are up to speed, you shouldn't have any fires. The only problem is it is seriously slow. So if you have got a large battery, then it will take a long time to top that up. So with something like the Polestar, which has a 78 kilowatt hour battery, 2.4 kilowatts will take a good few days to charge that fully from empty whereas something like the 7.2 kilowatt wall chargers these are much better and for most cars you're looking somewhere probably between 8 to 12 hours depending on the size of the size of the battery so that's an overnight charge but again that is charging from zero if you're just topping up which most of us are it's a very good way of charging your car so unit costs, what we need to do is go to the energy provider you use. So I'm just going to go over to Octopus Energy now, who are my energy provider. And you can see here, you can see when I charge, we get these big spikes on charging days. And these couple of spikes here are actually from running uh, portable air conditioning units. because It's really hot here in the UK at the moment. So I've had those plugged in the past couple of days. And maybe in next week's video, I'll do a deep dive into other appliances and how much they actually cost to run. So if you want to see that, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below. But the tariff I'm on at the moment, uh, most people in the UK will be paying a similar rate at the moment as we're on an energy price cap in this country because energy costs have got so high that pretty much all of the companies have now hit the price cap. So we're all just staying on these price caps because if we go to one of their fixed rate tariffs, costs are crazy high. So at the moment, I'm paying just under 30p per kilowatt hour for electricity. You can see here, if I did switch to one of their fixed months programs, if we scroll down, how much do they want to charge? 48p per kilowatt hour if I switch to a fixed rate. Yeah, I want to pay the best part of £9,000 per year. No thank you. So anyone in the UK at the moment, don't bother trying to fix your electricity supplies because the costs are stupid. Just wait for the government to keep changing the price cap because that's going to be the cheapest way for at least probably the next year or so. So there we are. Anyway, going back to the current price, currently paying just under 30p per kilowatt hour. So back to the spreadsheet, we've got the cost here. And if I just uh, expand this and then actually put some color, we can see that we've put 30p, which is rounded out to 30p to keep it simple. So here I've got cost to charge a 75 kilowatt hour battery. So why didn't I put 78 kilowatts? Well, you saw in the video that the Polestar 2 is a 78 kilowatt hour battery. So why if I put 75? Well, for all of the batteries, they have what is called a usable battery, and that is never the same as the maximum capacity. So although the Polestar is a 78 kilowatt hour battery, you can see here, the usable capacity is only 75 kilowatt hours. So that's why I've done it for this, but it would depend on what car you're looking at, because all of the cars have different battery sizes, which I'll show you later on in this video. So the cost to charge, we're simply going to multiply this figure here, the unit cost, by the size of the battery. So if I pop the color in here, you can see to charge from home at the moment, a full charge costs me about £22.50. Now we do know that electricity prices are going to go up substantially this winter, estimated to be going up by around 60%. So based on that, I've run some more figures. And that takes us to around 48p per kilowatt hour from the current 30p if we're going up 60%. 
So the cost to charge potentially come this winter, charging at home on either a free pin or a wall charger will be £36, which again isn't terrible when you consider what it's going to cost you to fill up your petrol or diesel car at the moment. So this is how most people are charging their electric cars, are charging at home. That's where you get the real cost saving. Now, what about when you're charging out and about? Well, I've used quite a few charging networks throughout the past 18 months. The main one I use is BP Pulse, mainly because when I bought my Polster as one of the benefits, they gave me 500 pound of BP Pulse credit. So whenever I can find a BP Pulse network, I go and charge up. As you can see, this one of the ones I jumped on. Um, so going to the actual BP Pulse website, what it would cost for the average person that hasn't got the credit, also it still costs me this, it just gets deducted from the credit. So it looks quite complicated with all these figures, but all you need to know is sometimes they will charge you more if you're using one of their fastest chargers versus one of their slightly slower charges. So most people are either charging at 50 kilowatts, in which case it's gonna cost you 43p if you've got a Pulse subscription, or 45p on the slightly faster one. So this is what I'll be charged, this is what I deducted when I charge, but if you don't have an account, you don't have a paid account with Pulse, you just maybe got a free membership, you're gonna be paying these figures instead. So if I just go back to the spreadsheet, and we can pop these in, so we have we have the BP Pulse member on a 50 kilowatt charger, so on the slightly slower one, the unit cost was 43p, but we also have here their fastest charger as well, and they charge us a bit more. But like I say, if you're not a paid monthly member, then these unit costs will be higher, and you need to adjust this accordingly. And this applies to all of the public charging networks. They've all got their different tariffs. So what you need to do is look around your local area, think about where you're most likely to be charging, take a look at the different networks, which ones are worth signing up with, which ones aren't worth signing up with, and then figure out the most cost efficient way to charge your car if you have to charge on a public charger. So based on that, if we do the maths again, we're looking at a bit more, you know, about an extra 10 pounds to charge on a public charger. But I think the Pulse membership's about seven pound a month. So it isn't that straightforward. And if costs do go up 60% and the charging networks reflect that exactly at 60%, which I don't think they did last time. I think they put it up by more than energy actually went up. You can see here, you're looking at 51 pound to 54 pound to top up. Now let's say that you're not a member, which is quite common. You just go to a random charging point, for example, um, Instavolt, which I had to do the other week. I was on holiday, there wasn't a BP Pulse anywhere. So I found a nice Instavolt charging station. And it's quite a nice place to go to, multiple stations. And we're seeing this a lot now, lots of EV4 corks popping up, which is quite cool. So I popped in here for a charge. So Instavolt, they just keep things very simple. You can go to any of their machines with your credit or debit card or your phone. You just use contactless payment. You haven't got to sign up or anything like that. And they just charge a flat rate of 57p per kilowatt hour to you. So it's really straightforward, but it is a little bit more expensive than some of the other networks. But it does seem to work a lot better than some of the other networks, I must admit, from some of the other networks I've tried. It, you know, there's, there can be various issues sometimes with connections and payments and stuff like that. But Instavolt have been very good. And BP, BP Pulse, to be fair, have been fine for me as well so let's take a look instavolt how do these guys stack up these give you an example of the most expensive at the moment well, not the most expensive but an idea of what it'd be at the higher end at the moment so 57p per kilowatt to charge a 75 kilowatt hour battery you're looking at 42 pound and if things do go up 60 percent you're going to be looking at 68 pound and i know many of you are going to be thinking well that's comparable to filling up with petrol or diesel and i do you know that is a fair point but obviously petrol and diesel costs are pretty high at the moment as well and i'd imagine most people are paying more than 68 pound to fill a car completely from empty remember this is filling a car from empty this isn't just topping it up maybe 50 percent and in terms of range again this will vary massively from car to car like with the poster this sort of top up, if I was filling up the car completely and then draining it completely to flat, in the summer, in this sort of warmer weather, I'd probably get around 250 miles. In the winter, maybe around 180 to 200 miles. So, you know, 22 pounds to get 200 miles in the winter or 250 in the summer, it's not too bad. It's certainly a lot cheaper than the equivalent petrol and uh, diesel cars at the moment. So that's what it costs to charge an EV in the UK at the moment, and it's gonna be going up going forward as you guys are already aware. If you are looking at EVs, the thing to do is always keep an eye on the battery size. So if we go somewhere like Lease Loco and we can compare the uh, the lease deals that are available at the moment, you'll see what I mean. Let me just go to fuel type and put this onto electric only. When you see, you'll see these, these figures will make more sense now. So you'll see 150 kilowatt, 
that is the power output and then you'll see the battery size 54.3 so this one has a smaller battery than the Polestar you've got the Renault Zoe here this has a 50 kilowatt now having a smaller battery isn't necessarily a bad thing as it's a lot less weight so something like the Zoe here with only a 50 kilowatt battery might still have a decent range uh, you've got the MG here with a 73 kilowatt hour battery so just go through them and see what the battery size is think about your own needs you know do you really need 250 300 mile of range is most of your stuff done locally you know for me I charge probably 95% of the time at home. The only times I have to charge in public is when I'm going on holiday and I'm driving across the country and you can just do the planning in advance. Um, so do that and then you can figure out roughly how much it would cost you to charge an EV based on your own usage and the battery size of the car that you're looking to purchase. So hopefully you guys have found this video helpful. If you did, I would appreciate you hit that like button. If you wanna see more from me, subscribe to the channel. And what I'm gonna do now is pop up a video showing you how you can get help with the current energy crisis, how you can claim up to 1,650 pound. And I recommend you guys give that a watch.